Nearly half a century ago, the Loma Linda University Overseas Heart Team was founded by cardiac surgeon Ellsworth Wareham and cardiologist Joan Coggan. Over the decades, it has established or enhanced heart surgery programs in 16 countries on four separate continents. Thousands of individuals have directly benefited from the work of the heart team, but tens of thousands have benefited from the education the heart team provides. The following story is about one of these individuals and her journey to find the doctors who saved her life in April of 1974. I was sick. I was, I felt no energy, tired all the time. My parents didn't know I was sick. They thought I was unhappy, unpleasant child. My mom had to take me to the hospital. And then the doctor told her that I was born with that. I was 14 years old. Yes, maybe less than 14. They know that I needed surgery, heart open surgery. And then the team came, so I got operation, operated. It occurred to us that uh, we could go to Vietnam and do heart surgery over there, even though the war was uh, uh, active between the North and the South and so we made arrangements to have our equipment shipped by flying tigers. I, I remember them but a few of them I remember most especially now I know his name is Dr. Hartley. He was the youngest member and he was to me he was good looking at 14 years old I know it is who was, who was a good-looking one. <laughs> Dr. Wareham, I didn't know his name then, now I knew. He was a head of the team, Dr. Coggan, and the rest I remember their face, their faces. At the time I didn't know they were from Loma Linda. The need was so great for the type of surgery which, which we were offering that we were immediately uh, overwhelmed with the number of patients that we could operate upon. I was always grateful to them. Think of them all the time. After the operation, I was, and the communists took over the country, I was 15 years old then. Life is hard. I, get, I was getting to teenager and young adult. Life is very, was very, very difficult. So I wanted to escape. In the daytime, I worked with my mom in the hair salon. We got the hair salon at home, very modest. It's not fancy at all. In the daytime, I worked in the hair salon with my mom. At night, I went to school for English. I got myself, I was getting myself ready but I didn't know if I made it or not if I make it or not because escaping is something 99% you don't make it it's like gambling I escaped four times two times nothing happened I went back home the third time I got caught I was in jail for seven months in the jail, I'm sure it's not jail like here. If you watch a movie about a concentrate camp, it's just like that. And then the fourth time I made it, um, I was in Thailand for about three years. In refugee camp, we could not decide which country we want to go depend which country want to accept you. The Canadian government accepted it, accepted me. So within six months after that, I came to Canada. When I came here, I wanted, I always wanted to know who they were, who they are and where they are, and to find them.
Telling them about this story to almost all of my clients. I have a hair salon set up in one part of my house. So one of my clients, all I told him was a group of American people. They went to Vietnam. I didn't even remember the month. So he went home and he went on the internet. He got all information and he brought to me. He said, I think these are, these are the people. They were the ones from Loma Linda. I got my son to go on the internet to find Loma Linda, like where contact us, email. My mom, Nguyen Thi Minga, was one of the patients who were operated by Loma Linda University's overseas heart surgery team in Saigon, Vietnam in April 1974. She would like to find out where the doctors who operated it on her are now. It means a great deal to my mom if she would have the chance to talk to one of the members. Thank you ever so much. She puts her mind to anything and she makes it successful. I really loved her at once. Is this possible that this truly is a patient? But by, by looking at the first paragraph of the email, they identified too many things that made it, I mean, the date, the year, uh, I, I, I knew it had to be true. So I immediately responded, good morning, was I ever pleased to see your email? I was in Vietnam as part of the International Heart Team. I was a medical student at the time. I am now Dean of the Medical School at Loma University. Your mother's surgeon was either Dr. Ellsworth Wareham or Dr. Wilfred Hughes. Dr. Wareham is still alive and doing very well at age 94. Dr. Hughes passed away just a year or two ago. I have attached that picture. It'd be very important to me if you could send me a picture of your mother. Also, please let me know which one of the patients is your mother in the picture I, I've attached. Please keep in touch. Roger Hadley. Dear Dr. Hadley, it was 34 years ago. I have been busy with my life but I never forgot all of you who saved my life. I came to Canada in 1990. After three years, I met my husband. He is a good looking, kind and gentleman in a good family from France. We have a happy marriage, healthy and good children. Like life lies in heaven to me. During the time thinking of escaping to the time I came to Canada, I was lonely, hardship, and difficult. But at least I made it. Thanks for your time and keep it in touch. If any of you ever have a chance to come to see us, please don't get your hair cut. I will do it with pleasure and guarantee job. God bless. You better leave me a little more back. <laughs> I really like my haircut. That's really a joy to have her uh, operator, uh, correction, have her uh, use her skills on my meager source of hair. Be sure you take some off the top. 
I think she's done an excellent job. I wish that she lived closer so that I could use her more often. To see Wynne 35 years later, successful, happy, pleased with her life, two wonderful children and a very supportive husband, you know, it's, just, it's just frosting on the cake. Ooh, if I don't like it, <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it, we cut short. <laughs> All of us want to be involved in something important, something that makes a difference, and not just a difference, but a positive impact. And, and when you know you're doing that, it gives a sense of satisfaction that is really hard to match. Okay, what do you have to do? Super glue. Okay. Just, just pick something that's water soluble. How about we use wax? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we can wash it out, don't worry. We make it spiky. And you realize now that there have been hundreds of lives are affected, thousands of lives are affected by overseas mission work. And just to be able to see one and recognize there's a thousand more out there, it, it, it's, it's awe-inspiring. To know that she would get to know and see these people, I'm sure. That's what was extraordinary. <laughs> and now it is. It wasn't easy. It was hardship, hard and lonely. But I made it. I made it.